Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am presenting you guys with the full moon lunar eclipse horoscopes and just like Sesame Street, today's horoscopes are brought to you by the number 18 and the letter I. Making light of a very challenging situation, the energy right now is incredibly intense. So when I say that the horoscopes today are brought to you by the letter I, that is because the letter I is intense <laughs> and the letter I is associated with the word identity. There's a lot of intensity around identity right now. And the reason the horoscopes are brought to you by the number 18 is because we have eclipse cycles that happen in cycles of 18 months and 18 years. So let's dive in together. Um, it took me a while to put these together because I felt so overwhelmed by the energy at hand. There's a lot happening in the world right now. And I really wanted to present these in a way that was clear, articulate, enlightening, and empowering. And I was struggling to find the right words, um, definitely making light by uh, referring to Sesame Street, but I thought, you know, a little bit of giggles are a great way to start and approach some heavy subjects. Are you guys ready? So we have eclipse cycles uh, 18 months and 18 years. So what I mean by that is that 18 months ago, we started the eclipse cycle on the axis of Scorpio and Taurus. So that meant that any eclipses that we had were involving the sign of Scorpio and the sign of Taurus. Now, 18 years ago, at the end of 2004, we had the transition away from the Scorpio-Taurus axis into the Aries-Libra axis, just like we're stepping into right now. And so what you might find are uh, pol um, commonalities between whatever you're going through right now and whatever was happening for you 18 years ago. So if you remember kind of roughly end of 2004, you might find some com comparisons, some similarities in what was happening in your life then and what's happening in your life now. Now, 18 months ago when this eclipse cycle started, um, we were first introduced to this energy of intensity. Now, Scorpio is a really intense sign. It is a deeply feeling water sign and it is a water sign that does not like being pushed around. Uh, the other two water signs, Cancer and Pisces, are a lot more kind of go with the flow. There's definitely sensitivity. Um, but when things are challenging, Cancer and Pisces are a lot more likely to move like water. Whereas Scorpio has almost, almost a fire energy to it. Although it's water, uh, there's much more intensity to it. Now, Taurus is an earth sign, and Taurus is known throughout the zodiac as being this super, super chill Taurus earth sign. And what we've had over the last 18 months is a lot of polarity between the uh, what Taurus represents, which is having our needs met, including some fundamental human rights, such as safety, food and water, a roof over our heads, basic, basic human needs. And Scorpio represents what it feels like to be a human. All the ups, all the downs, and everything in between. And, for example, when we don't have our basic needs met, food, water, and shelter, uh, or we don't feel safe, which is another association of Taurus, then what we experience is intensity of emotion around our perception of our situation. Now, the reason I wanted to kind of go back over what Scorpio and Taurus means is because even though the Scorpio-Taurus eclipse cycle started 18 months ago, that was the beginning of a highlight over uh, lack of resources, uh, financial difficulties um, on a financial and resource level. The last 18 months in particular have been extremely challenging. The cost of living has gone up. Things are becoming scarce. Uh, housing is very difficult to come by. There's a lot happening. And so the subsequent emotional reaction of every single human being experiencing any level of suffering or difficulty, it's been intense. Um, so you're not alone. <laughs> if you're experiencing intensity and emotional overwhelm right now, you're not alone. Uh, so what's happening is that period of time is wrapping up. Tomorrow's Full moon solar or full, full moon lunar eclipse, excuse me, 
is the last one on the Scorpio Taurus axis. And so what's happening is we're moving into an eclipse cycle for the next 18 months that is going to be, for the most part, over the Libra and Aries axis. And Libra and Aries are about me versus we. Aries is me, I. What do I need? What do I feel? What can I do about my situation? And Libra is represented by the scales. It's about interpersonal connections. It's about how we relate to other people. And it's all about themes of balance. So everything that was highlighted for us over the 18, last 18 months is now rolling into a new phase where people are no longer willing to tolerate any kind of level of suffering. And what we're seeing now is a lot of, um, to put it mildly, explosive reactions to people feeling like their needs are not getting met. This is taking a lot of different forms. And what's interesting about the eclipse that's happening tomorrow is that there's so much intensity that the energy of Scorpio is overpowering the energy of Taurus. Like I said, Taurus just wants to be cool, just wants to be chill, man. Just wants everybody to be happy, wants everybody to have what they need in order to survive, right? Um, but the sun in Scorpio is going to eclipse the moon in Taurus. And so everything that's happening around the sun in Scorpio is overpowering our desire to be calm and chill. I'm going to show you what the chart looks like for tomorrow's eclipse. So anytime we have a full moon, we've got the sun opposite the moon. And any paramedic out there will tell you, any ER nurse will tell you that full moons are crazy. And there's a sense of polarity, there's a sense of intensity anytime we have a full moon. But the one that we're having tomorrow is especially intense. We've got this major red line here. Now I'm going to hold this closer so you guys can see. It's not just the sun in Scorpio. We've also got Mercury and Mars. And on the opposite side, we have Jupiter in Taurus near the moon. What's happening when we have Mercury and Mars in the same place as the sun is that the sun in astrology represents our sense of identity. And Mars is the action we take and Mercury is what we think and what we say and what we believe. And our perceptions, which is represented by Mercury, can be very changeable. And depending on what kind of a person we are, we might be open-minded to seeing other perspectives, we might be closed-minded, right? Now the moon over here with Jupiter, Jupiter represents our core beliefs. It represents, for example, any religious beliefs that we might have. It represents long-standing perspectives that are either supported or held up by the collective. So rather than an individual perception represented by Mercury, Jupiter represents more of a collective perception. It does refer to our core beliefs, but typically those core beliefs have been cultivated over time. And if we seek a higher education, we are activating Jupiter. We are expanding our minds and looking for new beliefs, new ideas, new systems to kind of engage in and expand our minds. So this is really positive energy, the moon with Taurus. Our emotions on a deep level, if you ask any human being on this planet, we would generally agree, I'm gonna say generally because there's some people out there that won't, but generally, most human beings will agree, everyone deserves to have their needs met. But what's happened over the last 18 months especially is that it has come to light that there are certain individuals out there that believe that they have more of a right to these human rights than other people. When we have the sun in the same spot as Mercury and Mars, we tend to intertwine and get all tangled up our sense of identity with our perceptions, Mercury, and the action we take, Mars. And anytime I see this in a birth chart or anytime I see this in an event chart, I start to get nervous because what it means is that when we have our identity intertwined with what we think, then that means if somebody thinks something different, we could perceive that as the other person who thinks something different, that they don't believe in us as a being. Or for example, some people that are so locked into their religious perspectives or their political perspectives, 
that if you challenge them, they feel like you are challenging their entire being, their entire existence. And so the subsequent reaction to someone who feels like their existence is being challenged is going to be explosive. It's not going to be well thought out. It's not going to be tempered by reason. It's going to be explosive because they feel like they are being threatened, not just their thoughts, not just their actions. And what we see globally, and we also see on a smaller personal level, uh, is a pattern throughout humanity. When the Americas were settled, settled, let's think about those uh, descriptive words. Europeans came to the Americas and settled them. That is the history lesson that we receive in school, right? What's the truth? Colonizers came and murdered and forcefully ev evicted the original citizens of that land. And then they moved in and they set up their own towns and their own states and their own countries. And they're like, we settled it. Look at us exploring. So sometimes people use descriptive language to blur the lines of ethics because they believe that their rights are more important than other people's rights. Now we are seeing the same dynamic echoed in the world stage right now, whereas certain aggressors are using language to describe the people that they are murdering. They're calling those innocent civilians human animals. And by using such horrible language, they are trying to elevate themselves above the law and justify the horrible, horrible, horrible genocide that's happening. So when we intertwine the words that we're using and we use carefully chosen words to describe the actions that we're taking, because we have formed an identity tied into either religion or political beliefs, then we have officially blurred the lines of reality. The biggest risk with the energy of this eclipse right now is the risk that has been a part of humanity for quite some time. And that is the loss of truth. That is the loss of an accurate description of reality. And unfortunately, people right now who choose to speak up against genocide are either losing their jobs or being completely shut down because some groups of people have intertwined their beliefs with their identity and refuse to take responsibility for the damage that they're doing. So what I wanted to talk about is the risk of intensity, the risk of identity and how that applies to this eclipse right now. And what I'm gonna jump into is um, horoscopes for all 12 signs. Um, and I just kind of wanted to bring up the collective energy that's happening right now, because no matter whether or not you're experiencing it on a personal level or a global level, we can find parallels, we can find learning opportunities, and we can also find opportunities to be more honest about who we are, about what we do, about what we say and what we believe, but honesty takes courage. So my hope is that more people become courageous to speak the truth um, instead of falling victim to propaganda. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, one of my young children was called into the principal's office and I was called into the school and it was said that my child had punched another child. And when we asked my child, what happened? They said, oh, my fist tickled their face. And of course it's laughable when it's a five-year-old, but what do you do when it's entire country being aggressive with another country? Not so funny, right? So I'm just making light in a very heavy situation right now. Um, the energy right now in the collective is lack of trust, inner turmoil, and the desire for the truth, the desire to seek clarity and find answers and to stand up for justice. And as we move away from this eclipse and uh, Taurus Scorpio polarization, and we move into the Aries Libra energy, um, this desire for peace and 
the potential for fighting uh, is gonna be a lot more intense. Everything that has been building up for the last 18 months is not just going to end just because we moved eclipse cycles. It is going to roll over, <laughs> for lack of better words, into a different way of expressing this turmoil that we are all experiencing. So when we have lots of planets in Scorpio, like we do right now, there's definitely uh, intensity. And with Mars, Mercury, and the Sun together, we are having a really hard time pulling apart our sense of identity with what we think, what we say, and what we do. And if we think that anyone who disagrees with us uh, is denying our existence, then we are likely to respond in an explosive or ill thought out manner. Um, with Mars and Scorpio right now, there are intense actions. With Mercury and Scorpio right now, we are experiencing dark and deep thoughts. And with the Sun in Scorpio, we are noticing intensity in ourselves and others. But this is the most amazing time to explore concepts of shadow. And in the realm of shadow work, I don't know if you've ever heard that word before. Shadow work is the process uh, first coined by Carl Jung, uh, the process of exploring uh, the deepest parts of our psyche and with humble courage, being honest about what triggers us and how do we respond to being triggered? What does the most intense part of us look like? And by doing shadow work, what that means is simply being courageously, humbly aware of all that we are capable of and all the ways in which we justify negative behavior. If we do shadow work, if we are humbly aware, then we can have these experiences triggered and we can go, you know what? I am noticing I'm really triggered right now. I am noticing I feel really angry right now. But by noticing, I can put on the brakes and say, I'm not gonna take action. I'm gonna process these feelings and I'm gonna make sure that I take action when I'm calm, cool, and collected. That is the ideal. But when anyone takes action based on vengeance, based on retribution, based on the volatile emotions that they're experiencing, the outcome is never going to be good. And you can ask citizens on both sides of the border, all the innocent civilians, none of them want this. Political machines create this, right? So what happens in times of war, we're not calling it conflict, this is war, this is genocide. What happens in these times is that propaganda and um, the way that words are twisted can sometimes convince people to root for these political war machines when in fact nobody wants war. Nobody. It's not going to help anybody meet their needs. It's not going to help anybody have a roof over their head or clean access to water or, or good food. It's not going to help anybody. The only people who benefit from war are the political machines. That's it. So right before the eclipse happens, which is midday tomorrow, uh, Mars is going to be opposite Jupiter. And this exact opposition is going to bring a lot of intensity where we're going to see more and more ill thought out action that is either based in or perpetuated by these larger collective belief systems. And when the eclipse happens midday tomorrow, it is going to be followed up shortly after by Mercury joining Mars in Scorpio. Um, so I really see, I see this energy continuing for quite some time. And it's not until the, the end of the first week of November that we start to have more of a in the astrological realm of things. Um, when the shadow is activated, we can explode. And right now we are all becoming hyper aware of control versus lack of control, peace versus lack of peace. Uh, we're becoming hyper vigilant over our boundaries and over the all themes of self-preservation. Is my existence at stake? And if so, how am I going to react and how am I going to respond? And if I react and respond to feeling like my existence is at stake, is that actually going to bring us closer to peace? 
Or is it only going to perpetuate more war, more anger, and more pain? I really, really wish the world leaders were asking themselves these questions right now. <laughs> um, we can be intense in all that we do and all that we say and things like that. But what we need to do is we need to be mindful of how our behavior, how our words, how our choices affect those around us. Um, so how do you behave when life is intense? How do you behave when your shadow is activated? These are some important questions to ask ourselves. Um, I'm going to jump into the eclipses here. Uh, my apologies if the uh, political speak was a bit too much. Um, it's just who I am. I can't, I can't stay quiet in times of injustice. We all have different ways of responding to these sorts of events. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is just briefly how the new moon solar eclipse affected your sign two weeks ago what it was awakening for you. Um, the new moon solar eclipse that happened two weeks ago was one of the first ones on the Libra Aries axis. So what was really cool about two weeks ago was completely different energy. Um, it was a time of kind of just getting a peek, a sneak peek into the energy that is to come. And so I do want to touch on that really quick, and then I'm going to um, follow up with how the eclipse tomorrow is going to affect your sign. So these horoscopes are written for uh, sun signs and rising signs. I do write them for rising signs, but if you don't know your rising sign, please do feel free to look up your sun or listen to your sun sign. Um, if you know both, listen to both for extra um, insight. So... The new moon solar eclipse that happened uh, two weeks ago, we're going to start with Aries, Aries sun, Aries rising. Uh, the new moon solar eclipse that happened two weeks ago activated your seventh house. And I do want to give a quick shout out to my girl Bronwyn. She is moon wisdom on Instagram. She did a really cool video the other day that was talking about how to interpret eclipses. So the solar eclipse that we had, the way that Bronwyn of Moon Wisdom described it, is a solar eclipse is an outer event that leads to inner change. And the full moon lunar eclipse that's happening tomorrow is an inner event leading to outer change. So that's how we're going to approach these. Um, Aries, sun, and rising. The outer event that led to inner change for you guys, there would have been some sort of one-on-one -on -one interaction, something about how you interacted with other people right around two weeks ago. And you would have come to this realization, wait a minute, I feel like a different person in relation to the people that I'm interacting. So something was awakened in you when it comes to not only the relationships that you have in your life right now, but the kind of relationships that you want to cultivate moving forward forwards. And so the eclipse tomorrow, dear Aries, um, is the inner event happening for you is that you are locked in now to your values and really, really, really focused on how you want to align your values with all that you manifest in your life. So you may be sitting in a position where, you know, you're looking at your job or you're looking at your surroundings or your interactions and, and you're really, really focused on how can I align everything that I am and everything that I do with my highest level of values. And now that you're seeing value in all that you do and all that you offer, what's happening is you are growing and stretching with a new self-awareness. And as you grow in your self-awareness, you are calling to yourself more money, more resources, and more appreciation. So the higher that you have self-appreciation, that is now balancing out. And you're seeing that the people that you interact with are valuing you and appreciating you because you're setting the bar higher and everybody you interact with is responding accordingly. So the inner event happening for you is definitely, it's all about perception, perception of values and perception of your own self-worth. And what that's going to lead to for you, uh, the outer change is activating your eighth house. 
So like I said, it's all about the energy exchange back and forth. The more that you value yourself, everybody around you is going to respond accordingly. So if you've been waiting for that raise, if you've been waiting for that promotion, if you've been waiting for that breakthrough that is going to confirm for you that the world values you and appreciates you, that's what's coming through. So either on or around the eclipse, something major is going to shift in your financial world. And it's going to be a self-perpetuating kind of thing where it's like you value yourself more than the rest of the world values you and appreciates you and on and on and on. Um, your money is going to increase, your income, your resources, um, and then it all goes around in this beautiful little circle where over time you grow in self-confidence. So um, for Aries, Sun and Rising, it's all about self-confidence, valuing yourself, and please, please, please set that bar high. And if you find that people are not appreciating you or valuing you in the way that you deserve to be, it's time to set some serious boundaries. All right, um, Taurus. Two weeks ago, dear Taurus, Sun and Rising, two weeks ago, the new moon solar eclipse happened in your sixth house and what is happening for you is that you're really locking into new routines in your life uh you might have a new home new environment or maybe you're just eating better maybe you're just taking better care of your body and so as you've been locking into these new habits and new routines with a focus on health and well-being you're starting to see like especially like right on or around the new moon solar eclipse two weeks ago um what's happening for you is you're starting to become awakened to how these new habits and um new focus on health is really 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 paying off for you uh so you're definitely on the right track and that's going to be the energy moving forwards is really kind of maintaining any new habits or new uh wellness uh practices um, to keep this good momentum going, it's not only benefiting your physical body, but it's also benefiting your mental health. Uh, Taurus sun and rising, the full moon lunar eclipse that's happening tomorrow is really going to activate your sense of identity. And there's going to be kind of like this wave of inner strength coming through. And Everything that you've been doing to live your best life and be the healthiest version of yourself on the inside is now starting to bloom and blossom in a way that everybody around you is either noticing it or responding to it. Or maybe you're starting to get compliments like, oh my God, you look like you're glowing, right? Um, stuff like that. And so, you know, this is totally the case all the time that it takes tons and tons and tons of inner work before people notice. But it's really cool to finally start getting those reflections. Maybe people see you as healthier. Maybe they see you as more vibrant. Uh, maybe they're mentioning or commenting on how they admire the healthy choices and changes that you've been making. Take that ego boost. Let it help you experience a glow up. Um, and what is happening, what you're seeking, you're hoping to clear out your headspace. It's happening slowly, but it's happening for sure. Um, so the healthier that you are, and the more in line with healthy practices that you maintain on a daily basis, your headspace is starting to clear out. Maybe you're sleeping better. Maybe you're having um, more quality sleep. If you've been experiencing um, really difficult sleeps, anxiety, waking up in the middle of the night, bad dreams and stuff like that. Um, tomorrow's eclipse is really going to kind of lock in the healthy headspace that you've been working so hard to cultivate. So not only sleeping better, um, but feeling more creative, uh, feeling more inspired and feeling more tuned into your intuition as well. Um, a lot of people work to open their third eye or be awakened. But if you don't bring the physical body with you during such journeys of awakening, you're never going to get to where you want to be. And so that is the work that you've been doing. You've been working on your body, you've been working on your mental health, you've been doing what it takes slowly over time. And this eclipse tomorrow is going to be one of those moments where you're like, oh my God, 
all that hard work is really starting to pay off. So good job, Taurus. You guys are doing amazing. And I do hope that you do receive tons of compliments over the next little bit. Um, Gemini, sun and rising. The, the new moon solar eclipse that happened two weeks ago um, was definitely a moment of realizing how happy you are. Realizing how much you feel joy and gratitude and you're just like night and day difference from a couple of years ago you guys are not only feeling more creative um maybe you're having a really playful romantic encounter right now maybe you're thinking about having kids maybe you're just being really more creative um but definitely a really playful joyful creative vibe coming through for you guys which is really really cool especially given all that you guys have been through recently um so Gemini sun and rising the way that tomorrow's full moon lunar eclipse is going to affect you is that all that joy all that gratitude all that you have been you know really putting a smile on your face lately it's percolating into your headspace and now you're starting to imagine the future in a way that you haven't in a really long time um perhaps you're sleeping better perhaps you just notice more of a calm inside of your headspace um the happier you are in your day-to-day -day life the easier it's going to be to tap into your intuition and so that's another thing that's quite possibly coming through for you guys so the inner event happening is that there's much more clarity and much more much more of a sense of being tuned in and as a result the way that you imagine your daily life the way that you imagine your mundane reality has a little bit more sparkle around it rather than dread which is really really awesome and so what you're stretching for now is a way to kind of build on all that you've cultivated all that you've healed all that you've grown and maybe you're thinking about joining some sort of social group or creative group or really kind of getting yourself out there in society because now that you've got this foundation of joy you're more inspired you're more willing to get out there maybe you want to socialize for the first time in a really long time uh, you're starting to really come out of your shell and you're starting to definitely have a palpable sense that the heavy weight on your shoulders has really started to lift so whatever you have been doing to be a healthier happier individual keep it up good job you guys um cancer sun and rising the new moon solar eclipse for you guys two weeks ago activated your fourth house which is associated not only with your actual physical home but it's also associated with family roots and your emotional health um the new moon solar eclipse would have brought into your life a new sense of kind of calm or grounding or feeling at the very least like you've got two feet on the ground um, it's very easy for you Cancerians to be swept away by emotions, to be overcome by all that's happening in you and around you and through you. So any moment of experiencing extra grounding and extra calm is definitely, definitely welcome. Um, it's not only feeling calm and grounded, but it's also coming to a place of a little bit more inner peace, a little bit more acceptance. Not only acceptance of you and who you are and whatever it is you're dealing with, but just kind of a more of a peaceful acceptance about um, the, the way in which your life is going or the, the people that you interact with. Perhaps you've healed some family, um, family stuff. Perhaps you've healed some emotional stuff. And now you're finally like, oh, okay, I feel like I can move forwards, right? So that was a really cool kind of taste that you got two weeks ago. And so tomorrow's full moon lunar eclipse is bringing out of you more creativity. And the more creative that you are and the more grounded that you are, the more you are willing to put yourself out there and perhaps interact with your community in a new way or perhaps share your work, share your gift with the world around you. Whereas before you were like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready. And now you're like, here I am, let's go, right? So your new sense of feeling inspired and a desire to belong or desire to share or a desire to help other people 
is rolling into more creativity. So it's like the more that you work on being grounded and peaceful and calm, then we end up with this awesome kind of like self-perpetuating little machine where you're like joyful and creative, you share it with the world, it's well received, and that keeps you going. So more creativity, sharing with the world, and then it goes around and around and around. What you're seeking though is stability. And as much as it's fun to have different projects, different interactions and things like that, your mind is kind of thinking a few steps ahead and you're thinking, okay, well, where is this going though? <laughs> this is cool and all, but like, where is this going? Um, so the more you follow your joy, the more the next steps moving forwards will become clear over time. And sometimes the best compass we have is this feels good and this doesn't feel good. This charges my batteries and this drains me. So keep it simple and keep following what it is that gets you excited to get out of bed in the morning. And over time, the steps moving forwards will become clear. Don't try and figure out all the answers right away. Just be here now and follow your joy. You guys are doing great. Keep it up. Leo, Leo sun and rising. The new moon solar eclipse that happened two weeks ago activated your third house. There's been a lot of communication. There's been a lot of networking. There's been a lot of like sharing ideas and getting creative and bouncing some things off of people. And something about the words that are being said is opening up your mind to new possibilities and new creative ideas to move forwards. So really, really good. Keep talking to people, keep getting inspired, keep inspiring other people. Um, Cause there's definitely a sense of what goes around comes around. So the full moon lunar eclipse that's happening tomorrow um, is bringing you to a place of being much more clear about where you're going, what you want, and what your goals are for the future. Um, your 10th house is being activated in a way that is very career-minded, very long-term plan-minded. So whatever networking, whatever ideas you've been tossing around, those helped you get closer to being like, oh my goodness, now I know what I want to do. Now I know what direction I want to go in or what my long-term goals are. Clarity is awesome because when we feel like we're just kind of swimming and floating out there, we don't know where we're going. So, and I feel like for you guys, that's been happening a lot. And so to have any sense of clarity or solid, um, solidness, is that even a word? To feel solid, to feel certain, that's the word I was looking for, to feel certain on any level about a direction that you want to go in is being experienced by you as a sense of relief. Okay, phew, now I know what I wanna do. And now that you have an idea of what you wanna do or where you wanna go, it's so much easier for you to get creative and inspired when it comes to working out the steps that are gonna get you there. Um, really cool stuff. So now that you have a sense of where you wanna go, the change that's happening for you is you feel much more calm, you feel much more grounded, you're not feeling lost anymore you're feeling certain and sure and that is such a gift and the stretch for you is not only going to be working out the steps to get you to your goal um but also maybe even expanding on that and being like "Ooh, what about this but wait there's more right um so this is really really awesome for you guys to have a foundation a solid foundation to stand on is life-changing so good job Good job. Uh, believe in yourselves. Believe in your dreams. Believe in your goals. It is happening. Very exciting. Uh, Virgo, sun and rising. The new moon solar eclipse that happened two weeks ago activated your second house. Something about manifesting something into physical form happened for you. So whether it was an idea that you started to bring into reality or maybe you finally articulated what your values are by setting a boundary or respecting somebody else's boundary. Um, it's about seeing in reality all that you imagined and all that you dreamed of finally starting to take shape and finally starting to take form. Uh, so whatever projects you guys have been working on, that is just a taste of what is to come. Just remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. Um, so even though you quite likely experienced a flurry of inspiration, 
um, and boof, you birthed something new. Uh, it might actually take quite a bit of time for it to grow into maturity. Um, so do be patient with the process and be patient to see the results. Um, the full moon lunar eclipse happening for Virgo sun, Virgo rising is activating your ninth house. And so now you're dreaming even bigger. Now you're like, but wait, there's more. What else could I do? What other directions could I go in? And so your mind is opened and you're thinking about all these different possibilities. And what that's going to lead to is new conversations, new networking, new connections. Um, some of you might be starting a new business. Some of you might be expanding the business that you already have. Uh, some of you might be seeking a higher education or seeking new social groups but no matter what step you're at no matter what realm this is manifesting for you the key is communication so even though virgo sun virgo rising typically you guys kind of like to do things by yourself you don't like asking for help you like offering help this is going to be one of those opportunities where you need to stretch and maybe ask for a little bit of help um, especially if you are known for just helping other people, I can guarantee you there's probably people out there that are like, oh my God, I can't wait to finally be able to help you. Um, so don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to talk out everything that you're trying to brainstorm because this is a time of expansion for you and growth in a new direction and doing things the old way, doing things by yourself, doing things quietly is not gonna get you exactly where you want to go. Now it's time to be loud and be proud. Ask for help, put yourself out there. You'll be amazed at the results. The stretch for you is trust. The stretch for you is trusting that if you put something out there, it will come back. It's hard for you to imagine that when you need help, other people are going to be willing or able to help you. Uh, so even though trust is a stretch, it's time to suspend your disbelief and just put your energy forwards and see what happens. Um, and maybe don't be super attached to the process or even the outcome. Just focus on the feeling or the vibe or the message or you know what I mean? More of like a ethereal sense of like, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. And if you stay open to the process, if you stay open to the hows, then other people might be able to come in and be like, hey, love your idea. Let's add to it. Or, hey, I love what you're doing. Got a little bit of constructive criticism for you. Let's see how we can work on this together, right? Um, so open up your trust open up your mouth and ask for help uh, and let life surprise you. What you put out there is coming back. So trust in your self-worth, trust in your dream. It's all going to work out just fine. Libra, Libra, sun and rising. The new moon solar eclipse that happened two weeks ago activated your first house. And what you're experiencing now is a taste of what is to come for the next 18 months, self-confidence, self-love, and personal power. You very often embody the scales that your sign is represented by. It's not just about you, it's about everybody else. And the way that you define yourself, the way that you live your life is often in response to what everybody else is doing. Um, and it's very... It is a stretch for you to maybe do things by yourself because you have such a clear understanding of how humanity needs each other, right? But what is being awakened for you is the ability to take a step back and instead of convincing yourself that you need other people, having enough self-confidence to say, well, this is what I'm doing. This is what I believe in. And then if the people that you're trying to interact with or trying to work with, if they're not willing to meet you halfway, look somewhere else. Because what you might have experienced in the past is being like, well, I'm here and then nobody's meeting you halfway. And maybe you wait, maybe you sit there disappointed. Maybe you process a lot of emotions. Whereas now you're like, peace out. <laughs> I'm going to look elsewhere for the help that I need or the inspiration that I need or the friendship or the partnership or whatever that I need. That's awesome. So 
now that you've got much more strength of conviction and character, you are having a little bit of a glow up that you have a higher sense of your own self-worth, uh, humbly, of course. Um, and so the full moon lunar eclipse happening tomorrow is adding to that. Now that you have a higher self-confidence or higher awareness of your skills, your abilities, your expertise, um, you are holding the bar higher. And as a result, the world has to match it. You are not willing to lower your expectations anymore. You are not willing to stuff your feelings. You are not willing to suffer through BS situations anymore. You're like, if this isn't working, I'm going to go look elsewhere, right? And so the glow up happening for you is about holding the bar high, keeping your standards high, and then having enough patience to see how that affects your interactions. So your eighth house is being activated by the full moon eclipse tomorrow. And what that's leading to is a series of events in which you will find that your values are responded to, your expectations are responded to, and all that you're trying to manifest finally comes through. Um, so keep up the confidence, keep believing in yourself. It may be a stretch for you to take a step back from either people or partnerships or business situations in which you really, really, really thought things were gonna work. But if you give it time and you give it patience and you're like, nope, the flow isn't happening, give yourself permission to choose yourself. If you have a low self image, if you have low self confidence, if you don't believe in yourself, then you're much more likely to tolerate BS situations and just go, oh, well, that's as good as it gets. Or maybe, you know, a lot of times we convince ourselves, well, if I get rid of this, I'll have nothing. Or what if there isn't anything else? Or what if nobody loves me? But when we hold our confidence and believe in ourselves and set the bar high, we give ourselves permission to walk away from anything unhealthy, anything toxic, and anything that's just not working. So that's what's happening for you. Um, it's a healthy level of selfish that's going to pay off in spades, but we do have to be mindful about tempering the intensity right now with making practical choices, right? The energy is cultivating a sense of fight or flight for everyone. Um, so do make sure that whatever decisions you make are made in a time uh, and a space of peace and calm and grounding. And then you can be sure that you have made a solid decision instead of a reactive uh, decision. Hope that makes sense. All right, Scorpio, sun and rising. Um, the new moon solar eclipse happened for you guys two weeks ago in your 12th house. Maybe you guys had like really prophetic dreams. Maybe you had like really vivid dreams. Maybe you had like wild um, sleeps that weren't even really sleeps. Maybe you had a really hard time sleeping. Um, but what's happening for you is that your higher mind, your crown chakra is being activated big time. Uh, so if you're finding that your intuition is coming in, but it's kind of muddled, take time out of every single day to meditate. 15, 20 minutes. It's going to be life changing. Um, anything you can do to hold space for the ethereal messages and intuition that's coming through, it's going to pay off. There's a reason why stuff is coming through. Um, so make sure that you pause and reflect and listen. Um, there's really cool inspiration, intuition. Um, there's flow. There's a really neat universal flow just like pouring into your crown chakra. So if you're too distracted to notice, carve out the time so that you can listen, so you can tune in. Now the full moon lunar eclipse happening tomorrow is activating your sign. You might want to run and hide. <laughs> it might be physically overwhelming for you. Your sixth house is being activated tomorrow. That relates to the physical body it also relates to your mental health if you're just too spicy for society tomorrow stay home um you're gonna find yourself being very triggered by other people and you might have a really hard time holding your tongue sometimes you don't have to hold your tongue but you do want to think before you speak um the eclipse is not only 
activating, I'm sorry, the eclipse is activating your seventh house. My bad. The north node is in your sixth house. So with your seventh house activated, you're going to have, yeah, other people are going to be driving you crazy tomorrow and you might have an emotional reaction as a result. So definitely what I said goes, it is an invitation for you to take a step back and maybe not interact with um, challenging people tomorrow. Um, the outer change that's happening though is that this phrase comes to mind when other people show you or tell you who they are, listen, pay attention. That's what's happening for you. Even though you're going to find that you're a little bit more emotional than usual tomorrow, um, you are going to be experiencing over the next few days, a lot of moments of awakening where you're like, Oh my God, I never saw things like that before. So either awakening to the true nature of people, or awakening to the true nature whoops, of the life that you've created or the world around you. Um, you're going to be feeling extra, extra emotional, but it's going to lead you to a sense of purpose. It's going to lead you to a place of certainty and it's going to lead you to a place of wanting to defend yourself, wanting to defend your boundaries and wanting to preserve your integrity. Now, sometimes our emotions will be so overwhelming that we think our identity or our sovereignty is at risk when in fact, if we take a minute to just calm down and breathe, we'll realize later that whatever those people are doing over there is not really going to affect us. Um, but I'm speaking in vague terms because with your seventh and your first house activated, it's a very me versus we kind of energy. The stretch for you is healthy. The stretch for you is taking a breath and pausing before responding. The stretch for you is choosing the healthy path over the intense path. Um, it's going to be very, very challenging for your sign. With Mars and Mercury both in your sign, it's going to be very, very hard for you to see outside of your own perspective, but that's exactly what you're being invited to do. So take a breath, pause before responding, and if you're feeling extra spicy, avoid troublesome people. <laughs> um, Sagittarius, sun and rising. You, you guys had your 11th house activated two weeks ago with the new moon solar eclipse and whatever creative projects with other whatever inspiration you guys have been quietly working on at home or you know in the privacy of your own space the energy two weeks ago was finally coming out of your shell or finally presenting whatever creative projects you've been working on and the response was resounding beautiful support people are like oh my god you're amazing look at the stuff you've been working on wow and that kind of beautiful beautiful response was able to kind of help you go oh wow okay cool i am awesome i am doing good things um if you've been struggling with imposter syndrome the energy of two weeks ago would have really given you a much needed boost to your ego to be able to have more confidence in either your creativity, like your music, your art, whatever it is you're manifesting, whatever it is that you just shared with the world, the response was so beautiful. It's going to help you keep working at what you're working. Everybody needs that every now and then, right? So the full moon lunar eclipse happening for you guys tomorrow is in your sixth house. And so what you're doing is riding these waves of creativity and inspiration and now trying to think, okay, how can I make this a daily practice? Or how can I turn this into a sustainable living for myself? How can I turn what I love into something that's going to make me money and sustain my basic needs? Um, so this is really, really cool that you are starting to really kind of turn the page in a really important chapter for yourself. Maybe you used to work in a way that was very utilitarian and you're finally starting to move into the realm of channeling your, your gifts in this lifetime, right? Um, so what's happening for you is really, really, really helping you step into a new life that you have worked very, very hard to create for yourself. And maybe, you know, with the transition happening that's activating your 12th house, maybe at this point it's still just a dream. 
Maybe you're still just kind of imagining that maybe, maybe someday you might be able to do these cool things for a living. But what I see in your, in your astrology right now is that if you put it into practice on a daily basis, eventually, you know, you're going to be like, oh my God, I'm an expert at this. I'm really, really good at this because anybody who does something every single day is going to get very, very good at it. And I think part of it is that you just need to prove it to yourself. So for now, just have fun. Just have fun and keep doing what you're doing. I do see a major future for it. So keep believing in yourself and definitely turn it into some sort of daily practice. Um, and anytime people shower praise upon you, let it come. Let it come. Uh, Capricorn, Sun, and Rising. What we've got for you guys, uh, the new moon solar eclipse two weeks ago activated your 10th house. Uh, there's new confidence in your plan moving forwards. There's a sense of a new beginning when it comes to your career and the long-term plans that you have for yourself, aiming towards prosperity, aiming towards some form of predictability and some form of stability in your life. So either you're uh, solidifying a career or you're continuing to make moves that support the career that you already have. Uh, maybe you stepped into a new career, but either way, you're starting to feel really, really solid about your future, which is awesome. And the full moon lunar eclipse happening tomorrow is bringing you back around to, well, you know, it's not just about making money. It's also about having fun. And it's also about having time in your schedule to be creative, to be silly, to play, to be a kid, to play with your kids. Um, it can't be all work and no play right? And I do believe that that work-life balance, it's starting to get easier for you. Um, but every now and then you'll have a beautiful sunny day, for example, and you'll be like, oh my God, I don't want to go to work, right? Um, so the need to cultivate joy and creativity is what is awakening for you right now. So bringing into this solid five-year, ten-year plan that you are starting to formulate, make sure that you still create adequate space to rest, to play, and to be silly. Um, and the stretch for you is staying emotionally grounded when you feel like you are expending all of your energy just to get by. So if there is a way for you to work smarter, not harder, See if you can brainstorm in that direction. You only have a certain number of hours that you can work in a day or in a week, right? And if you've basically hit your limit, if you've maximized the hours that you really want to allocate towards work and it's still not enough, then it's time to take a step back and get really creative and think, okay, how can I increase my income potential? Or how can I delegate some of the tasks that waste my free time? Um, so anything that you can do to kind of reallocate your resources, your time and your energy with a priority on being able to rest and play and relax, it's going to help you a whole lot. Um, you may find that with the eclipse happening tomorrow that you just feel exhausted and beat. So if you need to take a day off. Spend the day in your jammies, whatever it takes to recharge your batteries because you can't neglect your physical health. You need your body to be able to get to work. So don't neglect your physical health. Um, Aquarius, sun and rising. The new moon solar eclipse for you guys uh, two weeks ago happened in your ninth house. And whether you're thinking about a higher education, whether you're researching maybe uh, metaphysical studies, somehow, some way you're expanding your mind. And it's really, really cool to learn new things or be exposed to new ideas and new concepts because there's been a sense of really being stuck in a rut for you guys for quite a while. And now all of a sudden, some sort of exit door is happening. It might be an internal exit door. Maybe you started meditating and now you feel more at peace and your ability to be present in your daily life is getting better. Or it could be an outer physical exit door that you find found a way to walk away from anything that is holding you back or making you feel restricted. But the energy for you guys, Aquarius, Sun and Rising, is definitely 
new, new, new. You're sick of the old, you're tired of feeling stuck, and you're throwing yourself in a new direction. So the full moon lunar eclipse happening tomorrow is activating your fourth house. Now, for some of you, you are literally physically moving into a new house. And for some of you, maybe somebody moved out of your house and all of a sudden you have it to yourself. The fourth house represents not only our actual home, but it represents our family roots and our foundations of emotional health. And so whatever moment of rejecting or throwing away the past and what hasn't been working, whatever way in which you manifested this new beginning for yourself, the end result is that you're feeling more grounded, more calm, and more emotionally healthy. So for some of you, it's about just maybe putting uh, your phone on do not disturb, uh, deleting your social media, reclaiming your energy, reclaiming your space, reclaiming your peace of mind. Um, it, for a lot of you, it's happening literally, and for a lot of you, it's happening metaphorically. But either way, it's all about following the new, and it's all about choosing you. And so what's going to happen now that you're starting to make some really sweeping changes in your life is you're emotionally, you're feeling better. And when you feel emotionally better, your vision for the future becomes much more clear. So free your mind and the rest will follow. I hope that makes sense. Give yourself permission to let go of the past. Give yourself permission to make new connections, new friends, new networks, because the support that you need is out there. And if you're not finding the support that you need in your usual place of looking, you got to look elsewhere. And last but not least, Pisces, Pisces, sun and rising. The new moon solar eclipse two weeks ago activated your eighth house. And then it's probably a really, really intense experience for you. Either you found yourself channeling, or maybe you found yourself incredibly inspired. Maybe you found yourself totally emotionally overwhelmed and you just kind of disassociated. <laughs> um, the eighth house is associated with life, death, rebirth, karma, but most importantly, repeating patterns. And so for you guys, the, the new moon solar eclipse a couple weeks ago would have been a time of just feeling, for lack of better words, I want to use the word possessed. Um, and not like exorcist possessed, but either like inspired or overcome or feeling as though something greater than you was just coursing through your body. So um, you guys do typically move like water and you may have found yourself paralyzed. You may have found yourself kind of stuck in motion or alternatively, you might have found yourself unable to stop moving. Um, something greater than you is definitely passing through. Maybe you're noticing that the veil is thinner. Maybe you're connecting with spirits. Maybe you're experiencing intuition on a whole new level. But there's magic happening for you guys. And what I'm feeling for your sign is that it was almost overwhelming. Um, you may not have known what to do with it. You may have only been able to be like, oh my God, <laughs> and just over a few days, like let it pass through your body. Or you might have taken that incredibly powerful energy and like manifested something or done something with it. Um, but what it was is it was a taste of what is to come for the next 18 months. Now, in order for you to really step into your power that you got a taste of, um, you are having to let go of the old. And letting go is going to look like for you, um, changing your belief systems, changing how you see yourself, changing what you believe about money, about resources. If you find yourself stuck in a loop when it comes to themes of scarcity, um, maybe you see yourself as um, someone who has always struggled, then in order to really step into success, you need to let go of the ways in which you identify as a person who struggles. For example, whatever repeating patterns that you've been trying to shift, it's like the final piece of the puzzle is that you have to change your mind. You have to change not only how you see yourself, but how you perceive the world around you. 
So for example, if someone identifies as a victim, then no matter what happens in their life, they're going to be like, oh my God, I'm a victim, right? If someone identifies with scarcity and lack, uh, as soon as money comes in, they're not going to know what to do with it because they see themselves as lacking, right? To be able to step into your power, you have to trust that things are changing and you have to be willing to let go of any ways in which you identify as someone who struggles or someone who has a hard time or someone who doesn't know what they're doing, right? So maybe you are overcoming imposter syndrome. Maybe you are stepping into a period of power and manifestation. Um, but what's coming through is that it's, I hate to say this, you guys, but it's you that's in the way. Um, and as soon as you change your belief system, boom, you receive the money, you receive the resources, you receive the jobs, you receive the praise and the accolades, uh, accolades, excuse me. Um, you are on the precipice of manifesting all of your heart's desires. So if you started something new and it didn't quite pan out, give it some time. If you have been working really hard at something for a really long time um, and you find that you just keep doing things in the same way, take a step back and go, okay, how can I be different? How can I think differently? How can I behave differently? And as a result, change my relationship with what it is that I manifest. So you guys are definitely stepping into your power. Like I said, the final piece is changing what you think and then everything else is going to fall into place. So I hope you guys enjoyed those. Um, thanks so much for bearing with me. Uh, thanks for so much for being here. It is a pleasure to do these for you guys. I really hope that they help. Um, if anybody ever wants to book a private reading with me, I am a psychic, a medium, a tarot reader, and an astrologer. I have many, many skills to offer you. And my only goal is to help. I just want to help people find clarity. It is always my goal to enlighten, empower, and hopefully uplift, even when we have to talk about heavy subjects. Uh, my website is www.queenbtarot.net. I have online booking and I can do readings for people anywhere in the world using video chat. Um, so please do reach out if you ever want to have a private session with me. I wish you guys all the very best. Stay safe. Please stay safe. And let's all cultivate an atmosphere of peace. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe the propaganda. Seek the truth. Trust your gut. And protect your peace. Take care out there, you guys. Bye.